Welcome to this video about section 1.3 here in the marine syllabus, IDCC syllabus. We will um, go by, follow the new marine science course book for IDCSE. But as always, if you are looking at any Cambridge syllabus, as good as a book is, always start by looking at the Cambridge syllabus because they're very specific in what you need to do and what you need to know. So here we need to be able to identify the Earth oceans and we need to identify and describe the localization of oceans and other features on maps, diagrams and other images. That's a classical one for the exam. We have to label the oceans. We have to explain that all the oceans are interconnected into a world ocean and describe the extent of depth of these oceans. We also have to be able to describe what seas are looking at some examples here uh, and we have to describe and identify on maps uh, diagrams and other images the geomorphology of the ocean trenches and so on the book also have uh, a bit more about maps about longitude and so on and I will go into a little more detail on that on this video so as I like to tell my class marine science is perhaps the most important class you can take because more than 70% of the earth is covered by water and all living organisms need water all the chemical processes that, that lead to life biochemistry as far as we know requires water our weather system depends on water a lot of our food sources depend on water our transport system depends to a large degree also on water the effect of global warming will also have a huge effect on our ocean and our oceans help to limit at least to some degree the effect of global warming so it is important to study marine science um, and most of the water on our planet is salt water in the oceans so the water we need fresh water isn't quite limited supply but there's a lot of water here on our wonderful planet so in marine science we differentiate between oceans and seas Oceans are the five large segments of water. Uh, we have the biggest one, Pacific Ocean. Then we have the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. And then we have the Northern Arctic Ocean and the entire Southern Ocean. So these are huge bodies of water where the influence from the terrestrial ecosystem is very little, if any. And then we have seas. Seas are smaller bodies of water which to some extent can be surrounded by land. For example, the Mediterranean, the Black and the Caspian Sea are totally surrounded by land. So they have a lot of influence from the terrestrial ecosystem. Here around Denmark, we have the Baltic Sea up near Finland, which is very much um, influenced by the terrestrials. We also ha have the Bering Sea, uh, which is less influenced, but in general seas are you find that smaller bodies of water, which are more influenced by uh, the land ecosystems. Although we on maps divide the world ocean into five different oceans, uh, in reality it is one world ocean. It's not like we can do something in one part of the ocean and it won't spread eventually to the rest of the ocean. So we can actually look at all the five big oceans in one way as one huge ocean. Of course, there will be weather systems, there will be currents that kind of divide different areas. We'll get into way more detail about that later. But a good example is that there was a ship who dropped a lot of rubber ducks one place, I think it was the Pacific Ocean, and eventually they end up pretty much everywhere. So over time, um, all our oceans are connected into one big world ocean. We use a coordinate system to uh, define positions on the Earth, and we use that by using the longitude and the latitude as kind of a, a 2D coordinate system that is strapped around our three-dimensional globe. So we have the horizontal line, the equator, and as we go up, uh, the horizontal line equator is at zero degrees, and then we go up north all the way up to North Pole, which is 90 degree north. So as we go down towards the equator, we go 
into lower numbers until we have the equator at zero. And then as we move further down, we go into, again, 90 degrees south on the South Pole. So we have from zero to 90 degrees here uh, in our latitude, our longitude, which goes down. Um, and here you can see where MAPS was invented because the zero line goes through England. Uh, to Greenwich Observatory. If you haven't been there, it should be quite a cool place to visit. Uh, and then as we move either east or west, we also change in degrees all the way to 180 all the way around. So as was talked about in section 1.1, uh, the surface of our planet do not get the same amount of heat and sunlight due to the tilting of the planet. So between the Tropic of Cancer, 23.5 degrees north, and the Tropic of Capricorn, 23.5 degrees south, we have the Tropic Zone. This is where we get sunlight and heat all through the year. So we we'll tend to have the warmest ocean here which have a huge impact on weather systems, of the storms and hurricanes, on ocean currents, and on rain patterns. So that is the tropical uh, area of our planet. The Arctic and the Antarctic Circle start at 66.5 degrees north and 66.5 degrees south. This is where the tilt of the Earth is so that during winter there is little or no sunlight during the day, and we, of course, that and night, of course, so we'll have ice formation and very cold. And between that, between the Arctic Circle um, and the tropics, we'll have what we call the temperate zone, where we have a huge variation, where we're going to have warm summers and cold winters. Um, so these are like the different areas uh, of the planet, roughly. Of course, there are much more to it. But when we start talking about how weather systems work and all that, this will all become quite important. So in section 1.2, we talked about how movement of the tectonic plates, the convergent, the divergent, and the transform style boundaries, they shape the Earth, including the oceans, and how movement of plates, they create different features in and around the oceans. Um, so if we took all the water away from the ocean, which would be a terrible idea, for many reasons, we will be able to see a quite interesting geography that we can't really see because it is covered by water all times. So the sea bottom has many different features. The first we have is the continental shelf, which is a part of the continental plate that goes from the shore into the shallow waters, and that's quite a flat um, going into the ocean. Uh, and that forms when we have continental crust that is below sea level. And we often have a quite shallow sea here because of sediments forming from the rivers running out to it. So we have sand, mud, stones settling here. The continental slope is a steeper slope coming from the continental shelf to where we go down to the deep ocean, the abyssal plain. Um, we also have, not shown on the figure here, but it's kind of like if we have volcanic islands, we have the mid-ocean ridges, which form when we have divergent plates going away from each other, and when they do that, um, hot magma comes up and forms into underwater mountain ranges. Uh, so, for example, the biggest one we have here is down through the Atlantic Ocean. We have the entire mid-ocean ridge there going all the way from north to south. The abyssal plain is the flat ocean floor at depths between 3,000 to 600 meet, 6, meters. So this is flat. It's kind of muddy. There's very cold here, not a lot of energy and very little life. Uh, and this comes when we have the tectonic plates spreading apart. Um, then we form this huge flat part of the ocean floor. We also have, specifically in the Pacific, we have the ocean trenches when two plates, they uh, go together, converging plates, and the one push the other down. So we get this very deep depression in the ocean floor. The most famous one and the deepest one is the Mariana Trench, which go down to a depth of more than 11,000 meters, which is way deeper than Mount Everest is high. And then we have volcanic islands. These are volcanic peaks that goes above um, the level of the ocean. Um, so this is where we have volcanic activity. 
a lot of it is for example seen around Iceland or it can be seen around what we call the Pacific Rim in the Pacific Ocean. So although from the surface the water just looks like a, a blue two-dimensional surface, uh, when we see into the ocean we see there's huge geography just hidden beneath the surface.